Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS. If you're new, welcome and welcome back KS family. Let's run the numbers. Bitcoin currently down 2.61% to 21,957. Ethereum down 0.9% to 1202. We're going to do a quick run through on the different sectors inside crypto. We can see the DeFi sector and then financial services the meme coin sector and blockchain services. Here is GameFi. It's really important to understand how these sectors are moving each and every day. Cloud storage, non-fungible tokens or NFTs, protocols, data services, virtual reality, entertainment, IOT or Internet of Things, networks, Cloud computing, real assets, PaxG is a proxy for gold, advertising, marketplace, blockchain infrastructure, stable coins, and lastly, currency. There are always opportunities inside the crypto market. So many times people look at the news and the press and it's the end of the world. Don't forget, these were the people that brought you into the market near the top. When understanding the smart money mindset, it's really important to understand smart money doesn't care about bull markets and bear markets. Smart money is always there. They're boresogging. And what is boresogging? They're buying on red and selling on green. This is rule 621. Boresogging may sound easy, but it's actually a little bit more complex. It takes knowledge. We could say that all people who have a driver's license know how to park. Well, parking across two spaces is parking. Parking so as not to let the driver into the car is another. And parking like this is also technically parking, but they're not really parking. You could say it's parking, but it's not very effective parking. And it's like that with Borsog. To do Borsog effectively, we need to mark up our charts, look at outside trends, look at the timing within the crypto market, have a professional attitude and mastery of emotional control, and then buy and sell. It's like we need to walk up the staircases of knowledge to do Borsogging correctly. And rule 141 is really, really important. Go slow to go fast. We've seen a massive sell-off just in two days. We've had a 26.5% sell-off and we've come very close to the KS model level of very, very strong support. And we're only about 8% away from that support. Often I spend so much time doing videos, I don't get much of a chance to trade. But over the past two days, I focused on my trading and did 17 Borsog trades that I will share with you over the next two weeks. The important thing to understand, these Borsog trades were profitable trades made when prices were absolutely melting down. And the reason I did this is I've always said it's a thing that you can make money in any financial market condition. So of course I need to prove it. I'd just like to call out a quote from Bildi in yesterday's episode. Bildi said, It will be interesting to look back on these times in future years when we had no doubt been through many, many more dumps and be thankful we didn't run away when everything was on sale. And we also exercised a level-headed approach and didn't give in to fear of missing out or FOMO either. Patience is required for both. And Art said, patience, kindness and forgiveness are key in times like this. And Nenad, wonderful time to learn. And Flamingo, we will look back on this time and be happy we remain strong and focused. One way to build that strength is rule 760. Start small and scale. This is about getting involved in the market from a trading perspective. Sometimes people just invest, but I don't believe it's an investor's market anymore. To have an investor's market, you must have an overwhelming, compelling momentum, and that's typically to the upside. What we've actually seen is just so many black swans all congealing within the financial markets and across the markets globally. 
it would be more than reasonable to say that we've actually transitioned into a trader's market right now. And that doesn't mean you can't invest. Of course you can. Setting up accumulation trades is a really, really sensible thing to do. There's no problem at all in that. But if you're not doing any trading, I feel that you will miss out on so many, many opportunities. And just in the past two days, I've done 17 Borsog trades within the confines of what the market would give. And that's about on average 10%. And remember, this is only two days. So I've been able to extract out of the market 10% over 17 times actually. And I'll be sharing each and every one of those trades with you one trade per day. And when it comes to starting small, you can put as little as a dollar into the market if you feel that's a small amount of money for you. Or you could put five or 10 or 100 or whatever your financial position is, but make it small. You're not after the money, you're after the knowledge. You want to park that car properly. And you can always scale. One thing that you will find when you do a lot of small trades and you are very successful, there's an overwhelming urge to scale up almost immediately. We're in for very volatile market conditions. And as you're learning, I suggest you keep it small as you do it because actually you're learning. Professional investors and professional traders know how important percentages are. They're critically important. For example, if you're making 10% on your investment in a year, that's pretty good. That's certainly a lot better than bank interest. But if you're making 10% a week and just rolling it over, that's unbelievable. And it's not about pulling out these big percentages. This is a concept. The 10% per week rule is a concept. And like I was saying, I've done it over 17 times just over the past two days. But it's not about that. It's just about showing you what is possible. Just like parking a car, it requires knowledge and rules and patience. A real wealth, positive excellence focus is very important to create an unemotional trade. And we know all investors become traders anytime they buy or sell. And you must buy on red. The buying on red can be very nuanced as well. It doesn't mean that price has to come down and down and down and you seek to capture the bottom. Price may be going up, but you seek to capture the retracement. For example, with Phantom USDT, what I did was I just looked at the specific chart for Phantom, saw what was occurring, saw a pullback to a level of support and then went in saw another rally up and then bought as it was coming down and sold both positions at a level of resistance. This in fact made a 10.15% return and it was just a small trade, just $100 per level. Now, if this is a large trade for you, you can use $5 or $1 or $2 or $10 or anything you want. It doesn't have to be a large figure. It should be something just accommodative to your situation. Now, the key is that this actually this trade took five hours and 15 minutes. We took about 10% a week. This was done in a little under five and a half hours. One thing, you control the trade, but the market controls the return. And this is really important for you to understand. When you're dealing with price action, you have to move in accordance with the market, not in accordance with what you want. Over the past two days, I've also shown you Borsog trades. I think this is really important for you to understand. Price doesn't have to wobble around too much for you to make 10% and you can actually make it really, really quickly. And then when you're ready, you could scale. For example, on Phantom, it's got fairly good liquidity. So there's nothing stopping a person putting in 10,000 or $20,000 levels instead of 100. But that is not the issue. It's not the return, it's the percentage. And if you keep on thinking about the percentage return as being the key, that's what you're after. I've seen so many times because I used to live in gymnasiums. I really love lifting weights. Many people would get into the gym. When people first enter the gym, they don't start on the low end. 
they want to rack it up as high as they can because other people are lifting those weights. But what they don't understand, it takes years and years to lift weights like this. Sometimes that's more than a person's body weight and two together when you're doing curls can be more than your own weight. But a lot of people get phased out. They don't want to start right at the start. They want to go right to the end. And then they cause themselves all sorts of damage because the muscle simply isn't strong enough to do the work. It's not just powerful enough. And you can think the same thing in trading. Just get the smallest weight that you can find, whatever is really, really comfortable to you, and put that into the market and allocate some of your investment, investment portfolio for trading. It's worth it. And just remember that all investors become traders anytime they buy or sell. So having the muscle to do trading is really, really important for investors. And don't treat what you're doing as a gamble. Make sure you mark up your charts. And I would suggest forgetting about bull market and bear market. Bear markets, bull markets, you can make money in either of them. And what I'm going to show you across the next week or so is all the trades that I made when price was plummeting. For example, if you can make money when price is falling off a cliff, you can make money at any time. But always embrace starting small and scale. Go slow to go fast. What you will find, professionals just like professional weightlifters, they can go to the end of the rack, the lower right hand side of the rack. When you're a professional, you always seek to be on the right side of the percentage. Even you can be on the wrong side of the trade. That's what separates professionals from everybody else. Crypto technical analysts seek to get on the right side of the percentage. They scientifically track investor attention, which is measured by price, which is reality, not future promises. You must trade the chart in front of you. Just tune out all the news, noise on the news because there's so much noise. It's literally the end of the world. For example, if you got sucked in and I say sucked in because they do suck people in the news sucks people in to think oh there's no opportunities I'm just going to go and do something else now it's just not like that if you have the knowledge you can do anything but it's always you must override those fearful emotions and that's not easy to do what you will also find when you've marked up sufficient charts with the CTKS method, you will see the lines without having to mark up their charts. That is a pretty good thing. Then you must check outside trends. And of course, the inflation and Fed narrative is a really strong narrative at the moment. And what do we look for next? We come back in and find the market's focus, understanding that opportunities reset daily. And crypto is very fast. So when you actually execute a buy order, put in your sell order and please don't be greedy. Just let the market give you what the market will give you. Don't try to force the market into something. For example, making back a loss. That just won't happen. Just move with the market. For example, in some of the trades that I do, I just fit the market's momentum. And some of the trades don't get 10%. And some of the trades get over 20%. But I just fit the market. This is where mastery of emotional control and being a professional comes into play. You can't actually make up for losses in the market if you got hit on a particular holding. That's just the way it goes. The, the market does this to everybody. If you think about the large, the large purchases of Bitcoin, for example, MicroStrategy, Michael Saylor has taken a billion dollar bath, but that's okay by Michael because he knows where it's going. He understands that crypto is not crypto. Crypto is Web 3.0 or as Jack Dorsey wants to upgrade that number. But the concept is it's the next internet, the next internet of value that's going to create so many opportunities. And these very visionary people say, okay, I got the loss, but I know where it's headed. And that's the way to go. That's the way to contextualize it. 
But a lot of people don't understand what crypto is. Therefore, they get very, very freaked out. They've been told that it just always goes up and they're guaranteed to make a million dollars because there's so many influencers out there that say it. But the influencers don't give you the skills. I'm trying to give you the skills. And one of the most important is a positive excellence and real wealth focus. We talk about it a lot. Without this real wealth focus or a focus on positive excellence, you'll find yourself drifting into losses. And then there are many, many ways to buy and to sell. And the concept is you're just like a chef. You gather all the different ingredients together and you make whatever you want to make. A very interesting thing is happening at the market, in the market at the moment. So let's have a look at rule 225. Bitcoin cannot escape the stock market's gravity. We've seen the stock market do its thing and it's been coming down quite a bit. But you'll notice there's been a bit of a blip here. It's not just kept on coming straight down, it's blipped. And it's also really interesting to see that the fear gauge in the market actually retraced. It hit that level that we put in quite a while ago and it retraced down. That's actually a really good message that it's sending. But what did we see with stocks? We saw a gradual turning around. Masterclass students, you should know what this particular pattern is. We saw bond prices retreating and bond yields going higher. The US dollar is increasing in strength, but it had a little bit of a pullback and gold has been decaying. We can see also that oil is being hit. It's coming down and we can also see that the put call ratio is getting more negative sentiment impacting it at the moment. We can also see that junk bonds are starting to come up. Masterclass students, you'll get my live chart in TM6. You'll notice this little wobbly line. What is that? That's the RSI. That tells you if something is overbought or oversold. That can be a really, really good indicator to keep in mind. I thought I would throw it up for everyone. So it just helps you. It's just another one other piece of data that you can use. And when we're looking at inflation expectations, look at the 10 year and the five year. The 10 year and the five year. The 10 year used to be 2.74. It's now 2.6. And the five year used to be 3.11. Now it's 2.88. What is this actually telling us? This is actually saying that the Fed's policy actions are being taken seriously by the market. And you might notice the annual inflation rate, that 8.6 has somehow disappeared. This is always live data. I see a couple of really interesting things and masterclass students, you'll get my live chart here in TG34. When we look at the NASDAQ 100, we can see it's sold off and it pulled Bitcoin down with it. Now, what are we seeing here with the NASDAQ? We're seeing really interesting things. The NASDAQ is bottoming out and look at Bitcoin. It's making higher lows. This is a low, this is a low, but this one is higher than that one. And why is that the case? Because we're coming into that very strong level of KS model support. And I'll show you just how strong it is based on all previous cycles. And masterclass students, you'll get my KS model in TM2. You can see that the price has come down and touched that red line. That's the support that I draw into that other chart. And what do we see here? This lower boundary, this red line captures price. Even the COVID sell off when the entire world basically shut down. Capitulation in the past halving cycle, the 2016 halving cycle. I notice some people use 2017. They will use the date. This is actually an incorrect way and shows a lack of experience in the market. Halving cycles run per basically four years. This is the 2020 halving cycle. This is the 2016 halving cycle. And if we go back, we can see the 2012 halving cycle. What actually people, when they put 2013, 2017, 2021, they're showing that they don't understand the structure of the market. 
there is always a lead up from consolidation into the run and then a bear market consolidation into the run. We must actually label these things correctly. It's really, really important. So I would always suggest that if you're a crypto technical analyst, please use 2020 halving cycle, 2016 halving cycle and 2012 halving cycle. That way you're speaking the same language. And what do we see about this red line? It took, for example, the 2016 halving cycle capitulation event. It held the price and it bounced off. What about going backwards? We can see even in the 2012 halving cycle, very well, all of the capitulation events that went down dramatically, some cut through it, but you can see how powerful this line is. Does it mean it will hold? Well, the probabilities say yes. But remember, if, if we just look at the COVID sell-off, that black swan event, price came down and actually cut through it, but it closed above it. Tried to get through it again, but closed above it. This is something that you must keep in mind. And we can see it in the 2016 halving cycle peak. Price came down to that very firm boundary and then closed above it. And you can see it got close quite a few times. This red line is absolute gold. If we zoom into current price action, what do we see? It's coming close, but it's not penetrated it yet. Could it penetrate it? Yes, it could, because we know that it's penetrated it in the past. But is that a good buying opportunity? Absolutely. But always consider why you are buying. What are you buying for? Are you just accumulating? If you're doing accumulation trading, that's absolutely no problem at all. And you can see this line, this dotted line in at 19666. This is the previous all time high of the last halving cycle. That is really important line. Probabilistically, one of these lines has never ever been crossed. Could this time be different? Sure it could. But is the probability on that side? Not really. It always comes down to your reactions. So what is your plan? What is your choice? What is your decision? What are you going to do if price moves in your direction, goes against you or goes flat and goes nowhere? You must be able to answer these things before you're under such immense pressure that you just don't know what to do. You must have an action and an answer and follow through with your words. No matter where you are on a specific trade, if the trade is not going in your direction and you feel it's going to go south, do something about it. That's what you must do as a professional. And the truth is sometimes doing nothing is doing something, but you have to have all your strategies ahead of time. And just consider that the market is always moving in a wave. It's always going up and down and up and down. You can already see that people who borsogged in yesterday are doing quite well, but keeping it consistent is the key. In yesterday's comments, we just said, well, it'd be interesting to talk about learning because learning is really, really important and the market is always teaching something. Jess said, learning is, a, is like a long journey. It's definitely a long journey, but it's never too late to learn. Learning is a kind of a practice. It's a process of self-improving and refining, beautifully said. So never stop learning because life never stops teaching. And this is a really important concept. And when you're trading and investing, you have to always perpetually learn because the market is always changing character. What worked once doesn't work now and then it works again later. And that's why you need almost a smorgasbord of recipes that you can put together to meet the market where it's at. That's why I always say, look for continuously reliable signals. That's really, really important. Art, who has been in the markets for a very long time, said, very true, Jess. I learned some very hard lessons in the past and I didn't have the kind of support that we have in this community. It took me a lot longer to learn about market collapses and especially to forgive myself for mistakes made during those times. 
and Art really knows what he's talking about. Art's been around a long time, just like me. And the key is to always learn. You'll always be getting lessons. And when you forgive yourself, which is a critical thing to do, you'll actually throw yourself back into the market. I saw so many people exiting the market when they should be entering. And this is what fear does. And it's really difficult to overcome. The news and the mainstream media actually promotes fear. They don't promote an unemotional perspective on the market. It's all disaster, disaster, disaster. It's not a disaster. There's opportunity everywhere. And the key is to live from real wealth foundations and positive excellence. Just put money way, way down the list of things that you want and put your skill, experience and knowledge right up the top and you're going to do very, very well. Yesterday, I wanted to share this little quote that I put together. Gratitude removes fear and anger. If you can be grateful for what happens to you, even though it can be very, very painful and very unpleasant, remember that in those dark days, your strength is built. Without the dark days, you're not the person that you are right now. Let's have a look at the longs and the shorts. The longs are here in green and you can see they absolutely bolted up and they've just been leveling off. And what's happened to the shorts? The shorts were collapsing. They're now coming back. Let's check out liquidations. Over the past 24 hours, there's been 435 million in liquidations across 125,000 positions approximately. Total liquidations in the past 24 hours, about 56% short. What about the past 12 hours, about 55% long. What about the past four hours? 58% short. What about the past one hour? 50% long. You can see if you're doing leverage trading, you're going to get wrecked. It's just a question of when. And we can see over the past 24 hours, there's been more short liquidations than long liquidations. So very interesting. We're seeing a decreasing in the velocity of the sell down at the moment. Let's have a look at the greatest gainers over the past 24 hours. Helium up about 18%, BSV about 13 Chainlink 12.35% up, EGLD nearly 10% up, Kasama up nearly 9.5% and Bitcoin Gold 7.35%. One of the things that I've said many, many times, when you get significant sell downs, money tends to accumulate into a small pocket. And you see this all the time in the stock market when there's climactic breakdowns in price, a certain number of stocks will just pole vault. They'll just go ballistic. And it's also the same in the crypto market. Just be aware of that. And I've said it many, many times. Let's have a look at the greatest losses over the past 24 hours. Tron down 14%. Monero, XMR down about 12%, HT a little over 5% down, Nexo around 5%, Rweave around 5 and Waves just a little over 4.5% down. This is just the top 100 cryptos. There are always opportunities to Borsog. And remember, money tends to concentrate on very sharp drawdowns. This is something that you want to leverage for your own profit. We must remember rule 45, no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity. They may not be able to escape it, but they can exhibit strength and weakness. Let's have a look at the top cryptos. We can see Bitcoin. Now you know that I've come into a 15 minute time frame because I want to show you very specifically strength or weakness in the market. We can see Bitcoin starting to consolidate and we know that because we know what the Nasdaq is doing at the moment. Have a look at Ethereum starting to actually equate with strength. Good to see XRP stronger than Bitcoin. Very, very important to look in at actually what Bitcoin's gravity is doing. And when we look at Cardano, ADA, we can see that's much stronger than Bitcoin's gravity at the moment. Solana is as well. Doge is as well. And look at DOT. It's going for it. This is the way that you identify opportunities within the market. But this is not the only way. 
Let's go on and check some more. Theta. Look at Theta exhibiting all of this strength. That's a very different pattern. It's still on the same 15 minutes, but you can see the pattern of Theta is very strong. A lot of people say, Ken, how do you select your alts? Well, there's a lot of ways of doing it, but this is certainly one thing that you should always keep in mind. Now, does it mean, for example, that Theta, this is a perfect opportunity to get in? No such thing as a perfect opportunity. It doesn't look too bad, but just remember this. When Theta was doing this, a lot of people would say, oh, I need to get all in and more. I need to go for it hard. That's not what we do. We always seek to buy on the red. And this is an example I was trying to explain to you about buying on red. It can be going up, but you're seeking to always get in on the retracements if possible. And that's not always easy to do. You may find that you just get in and it keeps on going up in case, well, that's, that's kind of nice, isn't it? Let's have a look at waves following Bitcoin's gravity. SHIB exhibiting more strength, overcoming a tight level of resistance. Could be interesting, but remember what happened with Theta. So you can put participation levels and levels at support below as well. That's what I would recommend. EGLD, we can see a definite area of strength. What about Phantom? Definite strength. What about CHR? Not so much strength. What about LRC? Tending to flatten out here. If it can get over the this particular resistance, the next target will be 4190. Have a look at KNC. KNC is going for it. This is what I was trying to explain to people. If you're running for the hills at the moment, this is the time to get in. This is where smart money, if, if you think about the cartoon that we always put up about the dance floor, well, it's not a dance floor. I call this cartoon the dance floor. But what you actually see is when people are seeing that the price is going up, they're happy. But when it comes down, they're not so happy. And then it goes up, they come out again, and then they run. I call this the dance floor. The concept is when the dance floor is empty, that's when smart money has entered the building en masse. Smart money is literally invisible. Looking at the metaverse, we can see sand being more powerful than Bitcoin's gravity. Axie Infinity doing really, really nicely, showing strength. Gala showing even more strength. Decentraland Mana looking great. But notice these waves up and down. You can Borsog on just one project if you wanted to. Engine Coin not looking too bad, exhibiting a bit of strength here. Ape just following Bitcoin's gravity. Remember how you couldn't get into Ape. Ape was going <laughs> parabolic. <laughs> I was going to use another word. But this is this is how crypto projects go. They are strong and then they're weak and then they're strong again and then they're weak again. Chili's has a little bit more power than Bitcoin. GMT starting to step it up. Good on you, GMT. Stellar showing power. CRV showing showing reasonable power. You can see that when you actually look into the 15 minute, you can see a lot of things that a lot of people would miss. And this is how we can Borsog. But it's not that simple. You really need to know what you're doing. To drive a car, you need a license. To understand the markets, please do crypto technical analysis. It will be a blessing. And let's have a look at Arweave. Arweave just following Bitcoin's gravity. Zilliqa just starting to get a little bit stronger, but look at Uni really starting to ramp it up. What about FTT starting to ramp it up as well? What about Tron? Absolutely poor old Tron melting down. Remember, I was talking a lot about Tron and I was saying, yes, it's escaped Bitcoin's gravity, but gravity will crush it eventually. And look what it's done. Poor old Tron. Let's have a look at some more. Near is basically on par. Matic is on par with Bitcoin's gravity. We can see ICX starting to do a little bit of a breakout here in terms of seeking to get above Bitcoin's gravity. What about VRA? Not looking too bad, actually, at all. Look at Rose, looking quite nice. KSM, looking really nice. What about IOTA? Actually looking very nice. And what is the difference? And this is where you need a lot of knowledge. 
What is the difference between IOTA strength and KSM strength? Please let me know in the comments. It's a really important thing to understand. And we've got a very beautiful community, a very beautiful global family. It's non-toxic. JK Secret made an incredibly insightful comment. And JK Secret said, we've got a beautiful and supportive community where we can feel safe to express ourselves without judgment. JK Secret goes on to say, in nature, if something isn't growing, it is stagnating and gradually dying. It's the circle of life and we are all part of it. Just like Bitcoin cannot escape the stock market's gravity, so all living things cannot escape nature's gravity. But we can move in waves with the ebbs and flows of life, always learning and being aware of the abundance all around us. This is a critical statement, being aware of the abundance all around us. Many people think that life is against them. Life is not against you. If you feel that way, life is for you. Life wants you to succeed. And you can say, Ken, but if I look back on my life, all these bad things happened to me. And absolutely, those bad things did happen to you. But bad things happen to just about everyone. That doesn't decrease the badness of what happens to you at all. There's no comparison in this world. What it does say is that when we look at life, we can choose to focus on what got in the way, what upset us, or what we can actually achieve and attain in this world. I would suggest focusing on attainment, focusing on being the unique, loving and kind you is the focus. Just look for the good in life. It's there. It's everywhere. Goodness is all around you. And if you open your heart to it, you'll see life through different eyes. JK Secret goes on. For humans, learning is part of growing. Sometimes we don't even know what we don't know. And that is really common. Sometimes we allow our ego to get in the way of learning. Having an open mind and an open heart is the clearest way to learning and growing. Very good. We talk about resistance lines in crypto. I have found that sometimes I have my own resistance lines in my life. Very beautiful. And I have to map them out and see what is truly behind them. Absolutely sensational. Then look for the support lines to help me navigate better through life and learn the lessons that those lines are showing me. Just beautiful. And those resistance lines are there and those support lines are there too. And having a positive excellence life trend is what it's all about. We all get setbacks, but they give us strength to do our next life rally. JK Secret goes on to say, those things I resist the hardest are usually where I have the most learning and the most growing to do. <laughs> you and everybody else, my friend. It's a constant journey throughout the circle of life. Cue Lion King music. How awesome. Being open to learning something new every day is the key to growing constantly and having a beautiful life, regardless of age or where we currently are in the cycle. I wish us all of that. How very beautiful. And you can see just what quality exists inside our beloved global family. I'd like to also share what Brett shared with us. Learning is the best tool to overcome fear and fear is the best measure to know that you're going in the right direction. Just beautiful. Mistakes are just learning gifts wrapped up in prickly paper. It will hurt to unwrap them, but get past that and you'll get the gift of bravery and wisdom. Better than that, better that than to let them build up into a wall of fear. And that's absolutely correct. It's really tough to unwrap that lesson that we get that fear delivers us, but it's always the lesson of how to be more courageous in our lives. Be grateful for your gift of learning painful lessons just helps us remember better. Thank you so much, Brett and Luke Rogers. Stoked to have such a supportive and caring extended family. Everyone's comments here are so refreshing to read. 
best crypto community there is hands down mucho love and mucho love to everyone and i'm so appreciative of all your comments and there's so much gold so much bitcoin in all of these comments i would urge you to read through it's just beautiful to read and so insightful and Rick said, I have started looking around my house for items I can sell to buy Bitcoin. <laughs> Rick does have a very wicked sense of humor. And Nilgun, waiting for the sun to come out again. In the meantime, enjoying these cloudy days. Nilgun, your prayers have been answered. The sun is coming out. We can see that Ada, Sol and Dot are already over 10% each. Ether's up, XLM, BNB. This is the way and this is something that a lot of people will not be participating in because they basically said, well, it's just come down so much, I give up. And then the music will start again. The prices will go up and they'll come back in. And then guess what's going to happen? The prices will go back down again. It's very easy to get caught in the wrong cycle. Try to get caught in the right cycle. It's all about being on the right side of the percentage. Don't worry about the right side of the trade. The right side of the percentage is where you need to be. I hope you found the content useful. Please consider sharing and liking this video and also subscribing to the channel. We would love to have you as a part of our globally extended KS family. Thank you very much to our moderators for keeping our community safe from scammers and the CTKS ambassadors for assisting masterclass students. And of course, a very big thank you to you for watching and for being part of our global family. If you would like daily updates on price movements in the crypto market, seven days a week, 365 days a year, please subscribe to YouTube. I've left helpful links in the description of this video such as the tax software I use and also a 20% off and also the CTKS masterclass. Please use the links to seek out an ambassador to get 80% off and you can always directly message me on Twitter at any time. Please remember crypto is volatile. Always prepare yourself for the best and worst case scenarios. Reality will likely be between them. Stay safe out there, my friends. Take care and see you next time. Bye for now.